Uh, I want to reach the, 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 the word to Mr. Dr. Blyer uh, from uh, EMC. We want to foster a little bit on data center and computing center. Uh, what is the future of computing center in cloud business? Will they remain? Will they transform in cloud computing centers? Or will the market of computer center transform in other fields or in other shapes? We don't know right now. Feel free. Yeah. Your presentation, please. So, so maybe I give uh, two minutes about what EMC is. EMC is providing infrastructure. So VMware is part of this. We, we own a major stake there. RSA security is part of this. And also we have a part, it's called IIG, which is coming out of Documentum in the past. So we do all about information management from the physics up to the software. And when, you, when we saw, when we're looking back in the 13 years of EMC I've been, you know, we transformed a lot of data centers from having siloed infrastructure, put it into the enterprises to now more private, what we call private cloud infrastructures, also big service providers. And what we learned at this is, you know, the economy of scale is very important, right? So when you, when you, when you do more and more information and you more and more process it, it, it gives you a huge advantage. So this is, I think, what, what the big American companies, what everybody knows, is doing is economic of scale. So there's one thing what people uh, have to keep in mind, what we call, you know, workloads. We're talking more now of workloads on what is the TCO, the so total cost of ownership. You know, when you, when you have a cloud provider, it's not only storing information or putting information somewhere or giving this information to for some uh, dollars per gigabyte or maybe a CPU, or whatever. It's also transporting information. So I think uh, a lot of people not talked about what happened if you want to change. Even we talk about brokerage. So if you have, and we're reaching with customers an exabyte uh, scale, right, in data centers. So what happens with this amount of information when you want to transport it? How, how you get your information from one service provider, maybe to another service provider, one cloud provider to another cloud provider. How do you do this? You put tapes in to put a petabyte on tapes and put it back in another one. You try to put it over, over wires. So, so it's always thinking about if you have to have an exit strategy. So what, we, what we're doing, this is what we do with Documentum, for example, retiring information. So as information gets older, it's automatically retired. With our security division, we make sure that the information is is kept secure, or maybe what we learned yesterday is the integrity is very important. So do you know who has accessed it? You know, this, this comes, of course, of a lot of legal requirements that we have the possibility to build in that you understand who has accessed the information, who has taken it, who, who has changed it, when it was changed last time, and things like that has to be very important. So we strongly, we strongly believe that there is a lot of changes when you look at the enterprises, that it's, it's still this on-premise and the cloud, cloud, private cloud gives a lot of benefits. And I think this will also happen with all the regulations we have in Europe with a lot of uh, data centers you have. But the economy of scale can happen there too. So we're providing with various concepts, maybe you have heard this, software-defined uh, storage, software-defined uh, data centers, the possibility that you manage data centers or you do data centers more, more broadly. So that you're offering services which you have maybe cloud, which you can offer other institutions. <coughs> and there's a, I think most why, why this um, uh, cloud comes up so very heavily is economic of scale, I repeat this. Because you, you can then suddenly leverage when some uh, CPU is or some storage is not leveraged anymore in one uh, institution, you can use it by somewhere else. I think this is what Open and Naval Line, this is all about. So I think when you, when you look in what you do in the future, it is also something you should look at what is the legacy you have. It's not easy from my point of view to plan on a green field. We're always looking on the brick companies, right? Uh, brick countries where they're starting a lot of things on the green field, and it's very easy to start with new technologies. We strongly believe from EMC that, that we will go in an area where data aware applications will come. So you have to look into what is the next generation of applications you want maybe to provide in the public space and how they get developed and how the leveraging the technology is already there. And the, in order to do this, maybe to have a little bit of transformation in your current environment to support this. And then you can make a choice when you have the cost uh, few behind it whether you put it in a cloud environment, maybe you need more scale for this, or you keep it maybe in, in, in your data centers, what you have there. So I think it's not saying that everything is now cloud and we should go everything where. It's, it's a little bit understanding where is the cost and what is the benefit and come together. 
I, I, of course, there's a lot of information which is public anyway. Maybe this is something where you can much more easier to store and provide to others if you put this in a, in a, in a, a large-scale environment. But I would be also looking very deeply into when you have services which you want to offer or you want to consume or institutions want to consume, what is, what is the best way to do that? And how, what is the total cost of ownership? So what is, what is the network costing to transport it? Is there a possibility to transport this amount of data? I can imagine that you know, satellite data are so huge that it's not easy to transport it in, in a fashion manner where you need it. Maybe you have it on, on board and suddenly you build up others. The third thing what you should not underestimate, with all these uh, cloud services currently popping up uh, wherever in the world, mostly out of the US, there is, there, is a, 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 there is a lot of people from my point of view from the government is already using this, you don't want to know because the IT knowledge which the IT departments have had is not in the, in the business side of the house or maybe in, in the departments that you have. So I think there has to be education because in the past what we call the CIO was the gatekeeper in, in making sure that everything which is, is in IT is somehow compliant with everything which is given by the government, maybe by the department and what we call it maybe by the business. So I think there should also something that we have to have educate the people what it means if you put the things in the cloud and what is the benefits or maybe what is the threats what you get there. Because uh, when, when you look what we're seeing in our security side of the house, there is a cyber security as a service already established, which tackles on a broader, broader scale than we can do this. So this is only some, some thoughts about, so um, I'm, I'm happy to discuss it further in, in detail with everybody you, but this is, I think, the, some thoughts I would put into the infrastructure side of the house. Thank you.